Hi, this is another uh, video about this, uh, my, my book that I'm going to write, which is not a book necessarily to publish. I definitely will print, you know, seven copies. And um, the idea is to, to formulate my philosophy uh, in one place um, uh, foundationally. Now, I've decided to do two volumes. Uh, it's called Relativistic Skepticism. And... Uh, two volumes. One, the first one is just uh, the concepts of relativistic skepticism from the base point uh, all the way up to everyday experience and um, to the bottom, let's say, of everyday experience. Uh, the second volume is, is for the genealogy, the defenses of these ideas, explaining why I believe this, refutations of, of alternate positions and things like that. Now, if you'll help me, basically, I'll promise to take any uh, refutation into account. It may go quite likely in volume two. Uh, if you convince me, you know, that my idea needs to change, then of course, you know, it might affect volume one as well. But at the very least, for for helping me at all, you know, I will acknowledge uh, your, uh, you know, your argument. So, I mean, one thing and another thing is that I do have questions. You can help me write this by giving that kind of feedback, and also. I have specific questions because, for example, I've decided to have a third volume. Instead of putting this as a glossary in volume one, I've decided to have a third volume, which I'm going to call Language 7.0, which is my own definitions of terms uh, that suit relativistic skepticism. Um, I don't know what to call that. Should it be an appendix of terms? Should it be a dictionary? Should it be a codicil? Should it be? I just looked that up in the, in the thesaurus, so I don't even know if I pronounce that right. Um, if anybody has a, a neat name for, for what the volume should be called. I want to have volume one, volume two, and then an appendix or something like this. That's the language. Okay, um, now in volume uh, one, section one, the most fundamental thing, I've written perhaps a, a, a first draft here, well, definitely a first draft, of, um, of I Exist. And this will be the first section in Relativistic Skepticism, volume one. Okay, I Exist. This assertion, I'm just going to read it now. This assertion is definitive and works in the following way. One, a phenomena appears to occur. Two, the phenomena which appears to happen is of perceptions. Three, I, by definition, am the thing which appears to receive the perceptions. Four, I call this phenomena existence. Five, to exist is to take part in this phenomena. I'm going to say I am by definition. Okay. As a definition, the term, the term involves the following other terms, or maybe component terms. One, myself. Two, perceptions. Three, action occurrence. The definition implies the following. One, the definitions for the terms above must follow from their role in the definition of, quote, to exist. Two, the fundamental element of the definition of our existence is occurrence, not being. That is, being, qua existing, is defined in terms of occurrences rather than as things. Oh, it should be in terms of. One uh, and three, a proper definition for thing is therefore that of an act of occurrence. Okay, that's pretty much. Um, one complex implication which follows from the above is that things exist or not based on their interaction with me through perceptions. If something produces perceptions, I know it exists. By this definition, you may know unicorns exist. And so they do. The question always at that point is what do they exist as? The unicorn, for example, exists as an imaginary creature from stories and legend. Materially, it exists as some sort of biochemical phenomena on the premise of the material definition of the mind as brain body. All right. Um, I'll tell you some of the definitions that I have uh, related to that. Brain body. So this is a term brain dash body. This term refers to the mind in context where the mind in brain, also one term mind dash in dash brain, is not individuable from the mind in body. Materially, this can be explained by the fact that the mind is not distinct from the body. It is both distributed some throughout the body in the form of the nervous system and also very reactive to chemicals conceptually individuated from mind and brain. Therefore, sometimes one has to attribute cognitive phenomena not to an individual individuated brain but to the whole recipe, including hormones, sense nerves, and what are el whatever else we may not yet comprehend. Okay, that invoked these other terms I'll, I'll define. Individuable and individual. 
In relativistic skepticism, there can be no idea of an absolute individual in the sense of an atomic, simple being, not at any scale. And from, the physical, from physical pragmatics, obviously not at the human scale. Things are therefore not individual, but individuable. That is, they can be seen as a single entity based on satisfying sufficient criteria of connectivity to be able to define, quote, inner and disconnectivity with environment sufficient to define outer. An individual is merely something one holds to have passed these criteria in a given context. Okay, uh, I stopped reading for a second. So the idea is with individuable, it's just putting the emphasis on the fact that it's, that it's me uh, recognizing and identifying something, I make it, it's, it's possible, it's, I'm able to make it, an individual out of it. And then finally, I think the last term to define since I referred to it, simple and complex. To be simple is to have one part. Since there is a presumption that all concepts can be put in terms of parts, potentially, nothing is expected to be absolutely simple, that is, atomic. Instead, something can be simple if it is individuable. Further, we tend to talk about things as relatively simple or relatively complex. Feedback? Okay. Cheers.